I'm going to tell you everything you need to know before buying the Anvil F7CM Super Hornet, and we're starting right now. Anvil Aerospace, all systems online. Welcome to a Star Citizen's Buyer's Guide. What's up, citizens? This is Subliminal here, and today we'll be discussing the features, functions, and benefits of the Anvil Super Hornet. And we'll compare those features amongst competing ships so you can make an informed buying decision. In this review, I'll cover a brief overview, take a tour, compare stats, go over its default weapons and components, as well as my recommendations, review pros and cons, and finish up with my thoughts on the Super Hornet. The 2950 Invictus Free Flight Week is here. This review was voted on by the community. Head over to Twitter now to place your votes for Aegis Day. While you're there, give me a follow. If this is our first time meeting, welcome. My name is Subliminal and my passions are Star Citizen and content creation. Be sure to check out some of my other reviews in this series and consider subscribing. Remember to check the pinned comment below for corrections, afterthoughts, and loadouts. With that out of the way, let's get to it. The F-7CM Super Hornet is a civilian variant of the F-7A Hornet Space Superiority Fighter developed by Anvil Aerospace. It's designed to mirror the F-7A Hornet as closely as possible using equipment and materials available to the civilian market. Proving that two heads are better than one, a second seat has been added to split the logistic and combat duty, making the Super Hornet a truly terrifying mark to engage. They are popular among mercenaries and bounty hunters. Anvil Aerospace is a terror-based spaceship manufacturing company providing ships for the military and regular citizens. Anvil Aerospace has made some of the best dogfighting ships in the Star Citizen universe. The F-7 Hornet series are a series of ships mostly dedicated towards combat and dogfighting. Some of the Mark I variants include the military-exclusive F-7A, the base model F-7C, the scout version F-7CR Tracker, the stealth variant F-7CS Ghost, the special edition variant F-7C Wildfire with a size 4 turret on top, and the closest possible loadout to the F-7A, the F-7CM Super Hornet. As of today, the Super Hornet is for sale and upgrade on the pledge store for $180 for a very limited time. It is available as a loaner to Valkyrie, Terrapin, and Hurricane owners. It is available in-game at Area 18's Astro Armada for a little over 2.1 million Alpha UEC. However, it is not available to rent. Now that we know a little bit more about the Anvil Super Hornet, let's take a tour. If you'd like to skip this tour, the timestamp is on screen and in the description. The first thing you might notice is the extra set of chins the Super Hornet has over the base variant. As stupid as it may look, they add another two size one hard points, so I'll take it. Let's step back and check out the second dual turret up top with two size two hard points. Below that, we have what looks like a large intake. And just when you thought we might be finished with the guns, down here on the wing tips, we have yet another gimbaled size 2 hardpoints. This amounts to two size 1 hardpoints and four size 2 hardpoints, all gimbaled and all pilot controlled. Around the rear, we have its massive main thruster, and we can begin to see why they choose the name Hornet for this ship. Here and here, we see two maneuvering thrusters. The starboard side is identical to the port side. And just above the starboard side intake, we have another maneuvering thruster. Let's climb inside the co-pilot seat first. Here we have two MFDs and access to the remote turret. The co-pilot does have an ejection feature. For the pilot seat, we can see the UI hasn't been updated to the new building box version as seen on the Gladius. Here we have the annunciator panel, six MFDs, and a hollow radar. The pilot has an ejection feature as well, and also access to the remote turret. Let's see how it compares to other ships you might be considering. For comparison, I have selected 10 ships that are competitors or variants of the Anvil Super Hornet. The Google Sheet document with the data is linked in the description. It comes in heavy, weighing in at over 78,000 kilograms and takes 8th place. 
It fits in at 25.5 meters in length and takes sixth place. It totes zero SCU as expected and ties in last place with most of the ships on this list. It has a max crew size of two and takes second place. It carries 583 quantum fuel units and ties in last place with every ship on this list except the Vanguard Warden. It cruises by with an SEM speed of 189 meters per second and takes eighth place. It blazes by with a max speed of 1228. It takes eighth place here, but it's actually only eight meters per second slower than first place. It slowly steers in with a maximum yaw pitch of 55 degrees per second. It ties in sixth place with the rest of the Hornet series. Where the Hornet series really shines is its total HP of almost 11,000. Unfortunately, the Super Hornet got a nerf and is slightly less HP than the rest of the series, so it comes in fifth place. It blasts its way in with a default pilot DPS of 1616 and takes fourth place. The only ship on this list with a man turret is the Vanguard Warden. It throws peas with a combined missile payload of just 21,000 and takes the ninth spot. And the Super Hornet is available for sale for over 2.1 million alpha UEC and takes the fifth spot. This buyer's guide is brought to you by my locations of standing collection over on display. Any purchase made supports the channel and for every purchase, display will plant a tree in places that need it the most. Click the link in the description. And let's talk about its stock weapons and my recommendations. On the nose, the Super Hornet has a gimbaled mount that holds two size one hardpoints. Up top, it has a Hornet ball turret that holds two size two hardpoints. On the wing tips, we have a gimbaled size two hardpoint. And for missiles, we have a size 3 missile rack with four size 1 missiles. The nose mount has two size 1 CF-117 Bulldog laser repeaters. If you prefer energy weapons, you can keep these. I'll be swapping them out for two Yellow Jacket GT-210s. One Yellow Jacket is size 1, does 16 damage times 800 RPM for a total of 213 DPS and a 2100 meter range. With ballistics, ammo should be taken into account. It has 7,000 rounds that would deplete in 540 seconds of continuous fire. On top, the ball turret holds two size 2 CF-227 Badger laser repeaters. I'll be adding a couple of Scorpion GT-215s. One Scorpion is size 2, does 21 damage, times 900 RPM for a total of 318 DPS and a 2100 meter range. With ballistics, ammo should be taken into account. It has 8,000 rounds that would deplete in 533 seconds of continuous fire. On each wing tip, we already have a gimbaled size 2 Scorpion GT215, so I won't be changing this. However, if you like the CF series, this is all you need to change. For missiles, it comes with two MSD-341 missile racks with four Marksman 1s each. This technically has a higher payload, but with almost half the lock range. I'm going to have to pass. So I'll add a MSD-322 missile rack and equip a couple of Strike Force 2s. They are size 2, cross section, do almost 3800 damage, have a 2.41 second lock time, and a 4800 meter lock range. An honorable mention would be the Rattler 2s. It's also worth mentioning that the Hornet Wildfire comes with a Hornet Ball turret that can carry a freaking size 4, so you could add more DPS. Unfortunately, this isn't available to purchase at any stores in the game. But if you own a Wildfire and have the Super Hornet as a loner for the Valkyrie or something like that, then this would maximize its damage potential. However, I would probably switch to the CF series due to the low ammo count of the Revenant. Now let's talk about the standard components and my recommendations. The standard power plant on the Super Hornet is the Size 1 Grade 3 Regulus. I recommend swapping it out for the Size 1 Grade 1 JS300 with almost 3,700 max power generation per second and a 10 second power draw request time. This will add over 1,500 max power draw and shorten the time it takes to reach that power draw down to 10 seconds. For coolers, it comes with two size one grade three bracer coolers. My recommendation for the coolers is to pair the cooler with the fastest cooling rate and the cooler with the fastest draw request time. This will be the ultra flow and zero rush. This will bring its maximum cooling rate to 678,000. In this configuration, the Zero Rush will start applying some cooling quickly because of its low power draw time, and the Ultra Flow will add to your overall cooling rate. For shields, it has two size one grade three all-stop shield generators. 
My recommendation for the shields in 3.9 is to pair the best overall size one shield, the FR-66, with either a Palisade for slower ships or a Mirage for more nimble ships. Since the Super Hornet is about average, I'll just add another FR-66. This will add a total of 1400 shield capacity and raise its regen rate and lower its PDRT. And lastly, the QT drive it comes with is the size 1 grade 3 EOS. I would swap it out for the Atlas. It's size 1 grade 1, has a 151 megameter per second quantum speed, a 5.1 second spool up, and a 9 second cool down time. With the Super Hornet's quantum fuel capacity, it can make the trip from Port Alizar to Microtech without stopping to refuel. I'm literally recommending this quantum drive because I'm tired of responding to the comments about the voyage. You guys win. If you don't have around 145,000 off of UEC to spend on all this at once, I would buy them in the following order. And it looks like they can all be purchased at New Babbage's Omega Pro or Center Mass, except for the quantum drive. After you watch the rest of the review, check out the link to my Urkel.games loadout in the description. Here you can find the places and locations on where to find these items in the verse. These are just my recommendations and aren't the best for every situation. Stealth is situational and is not considered in this build. For a stealth build to be effective, you would need to go completely stealth, and I'm not willing to sacrifice performance and strength, so I'm ignoring it completely. If you have any questions, comments, or recommendations, leave them in the comments below. My recommended loadouts can change any time, so to stay up to date, head over to the Subliminal Channel Discord where I store my updated loadouts. I'm building a community there for citizens who want to discuss ships, loadouts, components, weapons, and more. Click the link in the description. All right, let's weigh some of the pros and cons. Obviously having four fully gimbaled size two and two gimbaled size ones is just insane. Having the ability to bring a friend along and take control of one of the remote turrets is great. It can keep fire on enemies in case you need to flee to recharge shields. Its max speed is pretty good. If you need to, you can outrun most ships. Its hull HP is great too, allowing you to stay in the fight that much longer. And this is something I'm not sure that can be measured in the game files just yet, but it seems like it has good acceleration and braking. Even with the stock components, I was able to go from max speed to almost stop without overheating. Let me know in the comments what you think. I would say some of its pros are, its SCM speed is pretty slow. This doesn't mean much now, but when component degradation comes in, you won't be able to push it to its limits without damaging components and thrusters. Its y'all pitch rate is pretty slow. You aren't gonna be feeling very nimble in this thing. Another disappointing thing is this missile payload and it actually gets lower once you add two size twos instead. I just feel like it can hold a size four missile rack, but I guess that's just balance. And its last and biggest flaw, the only thing stopping the Super Hornet from being the best dogfighter in Star Citizen, those damn wings. This is one of those things that can't be explained on paper or with stats. The wingy things and the wing tips are easy targets. And if you lose both the wing tip weapons, you nearly cut your DPS in half. And I'm pretty sure maneuverability as well. All right, so Subliminal, what are your thoughts? I think the Super Hornet is the very definition of a brawler. It's tough and it packs a wallop and gives you the ability to bring in a friend to the fight. But like most ships, it only takes one big flaw to stop it from rising to the top. And that's all this stuff it has coming off of it that can be shot off with ease. And if I'm not mistaken, the Hornet's design stems from this game. Is this really something you wanna fly right now? I see this problem with a ton of ships in Star Citizen. They are designed to look cool. And maybe that's okay. After all, it's just a video game. But when it comes down to the level of fidelity that this game brings, the practical ships will always come out on top. There is a reason why real life combat ships evolve from this to this. Look familiar? Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours down in the comments. Don't forget to vote on the next ship for Aegis and Mist Day. Head over to Twitter right now. The Aegis poll will end soon. If you've enjoyed this review, check out more of my content. If you'd like, there are six ways to support the channel. Number one, you can smash that like button. Number two, you can share this content with someone who may enjoy it. Number three, you can check out my locations of Stanton collection over on Displate. Number four, you can subscribe and turn on the notifications by clicking the circle here. Number five, you can become a channel member by clicking the join button below. And number six, if you're feeling generous, consider becoming a patron. Some pledge perks can be seen here, including desktop versions of my locations of Stanton collection available to all patrons. If not, your viewership is greatly appreciated. Until next time, citizens, I'll see you in the verse.